Hello and welcome to my booktube channel, Jack in the Bookstack, where I talk about a wide variety of book genres and the bookish lifestyle. And I don't know where you are located, but here in Phoenix, Arizona, we are well into the triple digits for heat. It is suffocating already, and it's hard to believe that the first day of summer is not until Thursday, June 20th. But to celebrate the summer solstice, I thought I would put together a list of 10 book recommendations for you that you can add to your TBR for this summer. These books have some element of summer vibes to them. And going into this, I was really focusing on descriptions of heat and settings that were like stifling and hot and just give me those kind of vibes because that's what I focus on when I think of summer because I'm in Arizona. But it proved to be a little bit challenging. So I had to broaden my definition of summer and really think about some other elements that go along with the season. As we get into my 10 book recommendations, I want to hear from you in the comments down below. What are some things in books that make you think of summertime beyond just heat? What makes you think of summer? Because I really had to push my creativity to come up with this list. Number one on my list of summer book recommendations for you, we have The Great Gatsby, a classic by F. Scott Fitzgerald that definitely has those summer heat vibes. I think a lot of us, at least in the US, had to read The Great Gatsby in school and write essays on it, a lot of times focusing on the symbolism in the book because there is a lot of it. But one in particular is the heat. The heat in The Great Gatsby is constantly referred to and it symbolizes rising tensions between our characters and escalating situations. So this is something that definitely captures what I was talking about with a stifling heat that just makes you feel like you want to jump out of your skin. You're restless, but you're hot and sweaty. I picture a lot of humidity here as well. So this has great summer vibes and definitely I can relate to the heat in this book. And you know what's interesting because I did read this in school, but I reread it again as an adult and I got so much more meaning out of this than just the fun, 1920s, you know, the Roaring Twenties vibe was really cool, but I got so much more out of it. And even if you're just used to this story from uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and his epic role of Jay Gatsby, I definitely think you should reread this or read the book for the first time because I got so much depth out of the characters and I sympathize with them a lot more. This was a really interesting uh, perspective change when I reread it as an adult. The second book that you can add to your summer TBR is Love and Other Words, a contemporary romance by Christina Lauren that has a plot with a summer getaway to a cabin. I know a lot of people associate summer with the beach, but for me, I love a cabin setting. In fact, I actually did a dedicated video with recommendations for books across several different genres that have a cabin setting because it's one of my favorite and I love the atmosphere particularly in the summer. So Love in Other Words has two timelines. We follow our main character as an adult. Uh, she is in a medical residency. She's engaged to a financially secure man, uh, but she's guarding her heart a little bit. And she runs into her old flame, her childhood sweetheart. And we get a flashback perspective from when she was a kid going uh, with her family to this cabin, or her dad particularly. Uh, to their summer cabin. So she would spend weekends and summers there. And of course, there was a boy. There was a boy. But I love this character because she is a book lover. And these two bond over books. And so we follow this story. But I just love kind of like this young, innocent summer romance vibe as they spend summers together and bond. And I love the atmosphere. This is an emotional romance book. So I just want to put that out there. I read this and it devastated me and broke my heart and I cried. So I don't know if I can handle a reread of this, but um, I'm here to give you the summer recommendation because this really encaptures a lot of the vibes. The third book on my list also captures this kind of mountain atmosphere. The book recommendation is 
All Roads Lead Here, a contemporary romance by Mariana Zapata that has small town vibes in a mountain setting. This is one of my favorite romance books of all times. In fact, I do have a dedicated reading vlog for it and really adored it. I was going into this with low expectations because I read another book by Mariana Zapata and didn't love it, but read this and it blew my mind because I really, really enjoyed the emotional depth, the chemistry between our characters. I love that there's an age gap, but it's not a creepy age gap in my opinion. I like that we have a grumpy sunshine, but the grump isn't an a-hole. He's just like introverted. <laughs> and so has all these things going for it that I really like, but focusing on the setting. So it's mountain vibes, small town, as I said, and we're in Colorado, I believe. So there's not necessarily a stifling heat, but there is a constant element of going on hikes and being in nature. And that's something that I think a lot of people do in summertime. I mean, I don't because it's like 115 degrees here in the peak of summer. And so it's, you'll die. Uh, but other people get to go on summer hikes in the mountains, right? That's why I like to escape to the mountains. So this has a lot of those elements. I like to read this in the summertime because it gives me the vibes that I want, those mountain, that mountain setting that I want. So All Roads Lead Here is a fantastic book to read this time of year. For my fourth book recommendation, we're still looking at atmosphere that's good for the summertime, but completely changing from that mountain setting. The book recommendation I have for you is Death Valley, a really strange literary fiction by Melissa Broder that has an element of a desert survival story. This is 100% summer vibes. I relate to this because it is a desert setting and I live in the desert. This is very, very strange. What this book is really about is caregiver exhaustion and guilt. We follow a main character who is just really emotionally worn down from taking care of her husband and her father, constantly just expecting death on the horizon and trying to take care of them and really struggling. That's really the moral of the story here. But it's really strange. It takes a weird turn where she goes for a little getaway and she goes for a hike in the desert. She sees a cactus, a saguaro cactus, where there should not be one. And weird things happen with this cactus. Really strange. Uh, but then it turns into a desert survival story. And that's kind of what I was thinking of with this like suffocating heat um, and just being lost in the desert. Great vibes. You feel the summer vibes in this. And again, maybe it's just because I associate the desert with summertime and just being like awful. Oh my gosh, being stranded in the desert. The desert is a very unforgiving place. There's no shade. It's so hot. It's dry. It's not humid, but it just like burns your skin where you like inhale and it like burns your lungs to breathe because it is so hot. So seeing this character stranded and what she does to survive definitely is great to read this time of year. I have another desert story for you for my number five recommendation, which is Sundial, a thriller by Catriona Ward, which takes place in the Mojave Desert. I gotta be honest with you, I have not read this yet. It's going to be on my July TBR because I wanna read it in the summertime, but I understand this to have a mother-daughter element and they are journeying through the desert. So that alone is, it gives me summer vibes. Cause again, desert setting gives me that feeling. I love this cover. This is just really creepy with the skull and the snake. Even the cover gives me summer vibes. So I am hoping this will be great atmosphere for a summer read, but the elements are there. Okay, we are going to leave the desert behind now and focus on something a little bit different. But I do love a desert setting. So if you know of books with other desert settings, please drop them in the comments down below because again, it's something I relate to and I really like reading about. But we're gonna move on to the number six recommendation, which is Float Plan, an emotional contemporary romance written by Trish Dollar. And this one has a great tropical adventure tone to it. 
If you subscribe to my videos, then you probably already know that I read Float Plan in May when I was reading nautical themed books, and I absolutely fell in love with this book. Very emotional about a young woman who just lost her fiance 10 months prior when he made the decision to take his own life. And she wants to fulfill his greatest wish, which is to sail the world. So she takes a sailboat and she goes to sail the Caribbean and she finds it's harder than she thought. So she gets a handsome young man to be her deckhand. And this is their romance story. Again, very emotional because we're dealing with grief, uh, but I love the chemistry and the bond they have. But I recommend this specifically for summertime because of the adventure element. They're going to all these different islands in the Caribbean and I love seeing them explore and interact with the people there and the culture. There's descriptions of food, there's um, they're sailing and he will dive off the side of the boat to like get lobsters and then they make lobsters on the boat. This really gives you tropical summer vibes. So it's it's perfect. See, it doesn't all have to be mountain settings or desert. We can have something that's tropical because a lot of people like to go on vacation in the summertime and this gives you those vacation vibes because of the adventure to it and the different things they see and experience. Great book to read any time of year, but particularly in the summer. The number seven book recommendation I have for you is Chlorine, a really strange literary fiction written by Jade Song that focuses on one of my favorite summer pastimes, swimming in the pool. Absolutely, this book will not be for everyone. In fact, when I first read it, I rated it two stars because it was so weird. It didn't seem to have a point to me. It was one of the first like strange literary fiction books that I read, but actually it was after reading Death Valley that I thought back on this book and in hindsight, I enjoyed it a lot more. So I purchased it so that I can reread it with a new perspective because it is very strange. This is what it's about. What it's truly about is commentary on the expectations we have on young girls' bodies. That's what it's about. But the plot is about a young woman who is on her school's swim team and she loves being in the pool. She loves swimming. And she realizes uh, that she wants to be a mermaid and she wants to transition into a mermaid. And that's where it gets kind of weird. <laughs> and then the ending, like, I, it, was, it was weird. It's a weird book. It's a weird book. So it took some adjustment. You have to have the right expectations, which is to have no expectations. But her love of being in the water is at the very forefront of this book. And it's perfect for summer read because that is what I like to do. Particularly, I like to read out floating in the pool. Um, so if you're anything like me, being in the pool is like the summer highlight. So Chlorine is a great book to read. The next book I have to recommend to you is probably the most creative selection that I have on this list. But hear me out. The book is The Gracier, a YA dystopian by Kim Lidget that gives me girls summer camp vibes. I don't mean summer camp in the literal sense. This is a dystopian world where society believes that when girls reach the age of 16, their skin like emits this aphrodisiac that is like the downfall of men. And it's all the girls fault, right? Not the guys at all. So when every girl turns 16, they are shipped away to a secluded spot. So all these girls live together and just live out their 16th year in solitude, well, solitude, but together, um, until this thing runs its system. This like forbidden magic is out of their system and then they're safe to come back and get married and be good little housewives. What this story is, so it's dystopian and it has this element of like, fantasy or like sci-fi to it with that with like this magic that seduces men and distracts them heavy feminist tones i mean obviously but what gives me summer camp vibes is a lot of this book is about the relationship between girls the sometimes toxic mean girl vibes a little bit the decisions they have to make how they get along the different complexities of it so that's what makes me feel like summer camp vibes. I went to summer camp as a kid and it wasn't toxic. It was a lot of fun and 
good times, ride horses, make s'mores, you know, like, summer camp is a good time. And again, not literal in the sense that they're at some, like, Girl Scout camp. Uh, they're definitely not making s'mores. But this is a really fascinating, unique book. And if you're one of those that gets kind of, like, turned away from YA labeled books, this is definitely one that you can read at any age. And it's fascinating. I think it's just labeled as YA because all of our characters are 16 years old. But it, I mean, you should always keep an open mind. But this is definitely one that readers of all ages can enjoy. And I encourage you to read it in the summer. Number nine on the list is Razorblade Tears, a action-packed thriller by S.A. Cosby that really makes me think of summer blockbuster action movies. Razorblade Tears is a rare example of a book that I think would be excellent as a movie. It is so action-packed, had a lot of plot going, it was very violent, but there was also a lot of morality to it and character growth and development. We follow two ex-cons and they both lost their sons. Their sons were in a relationship. I think they might have been married, but they were murdered. And so the dads are going after vengeance for their sons. They're also dealing with a little bit of guilt because they were not very accepting of the same-sex relationship. So they're dealing with the guilt of how they handled their sons. And then we also have another element of race because the two fathers are from different races. So there's a lot of commentary in this book that adds a lot of depth. And I like seeing the characters kind of recognizing their mistakes and becoming a little bit more enlightened and really realizing what's important. And so great character growth. There was some emotion to it in between all the violence and the action scenes. I love a good vengeance story anyways. So this is, this is something that I definitely enjoyed. But I think reading in the summertime is really fun. If you particularly like to go to the movies in the summer and catch the new releases or stay in and stream movies to stay in the air conditioning, Razor Blade Tears could be good for you this summer. We have made it to number 10 on the list for my summer book recommendations. The last book on the list is Upstairs at the White House, My Life with the First Ladies, a nonfiction written by J.B. West that really gives you patriotic vibes great around the 4th of July. If you're interested in this book, I just checked and it is available on Kindle Unlimited still. So you can read it for free if you subscribe to that service. This is a nonfiction that is written by the usher, like he was the assistant to the usher and then the chief usher at the White House. He served under six consecutive presidencies. And so he is writing about his interactions, but particularly his interactions with the first ladies. So this was really cool because I feel like, okay, I'm not a huge history buff, but I do know some stuff about historical presidents. I mean, I went to high school, you're kind of forced to learn a little bit about them, but they're always idolized and you hear sometimes about their eccentricities and their personal life, but rarely are the first ladies highlighted. And so this was really fun to read about personality traits and projects and ambitions of the first ladies, how they supported their husbands, a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. Um, I thought it was really insightful. And again, I'm not a huge history buff and I was really engaged in this nonfiction book. I found it very, very interesting. And so it could be fun to read this summer. Like I said, particularly around 4th of July when a lot of us here in the US are feeling patriotic. Um, and if you wanna learn a little bit more, this could be a great option. So that's my list. But in reflecting on it, do you know what it's missing? It's missing summer book recommendations in the horror genre and also the fantasy genre. I mentioned The Grace Year, which is kind of like sci-fi with like a little bit of fantasy, but I think this list is pretty light on the fantasy. So if you have recommendations for me for summer reads that are in the horror or fantasy genres or actually any genres because I love adding to my summer TBR. Please comment down below because like I said, I like to add more. Thank you so much for hanging out with me in this video. I hope you stay cool this summer and happy reading.